Hello, I'm Chris Souter, an application expert with MLC CAD Systems. In today's video, I would like to take a few moments to show you how to manage the engineering change process in SOLIDWORKS PDM. My goal of this presentation is to show you the ease of use of, use of creating ECNs in SOLIDWORKS PDM. Now, before we get started, I want to just cover the wide choice of document types that you can use for ECN templates. And I also want to point out that there's a number of different ways in which you can configure your vault to work. During my time as a SOLIDWORKS PDM implementation specialist, I've used all of these different file types, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. I've even used SOLIDWORKS drawing templates as the actual engineering change document itself. But for today's presentation, what I'd like to do is show you how I'm using the XML document type for ECN templates. Now, I do want to point out that the XML will only work in PDM Pro. It will not work in PDM Standard. The benefits of using the XML file is that it creates a small file itself. So the XML document actually is a very small file. Um, if you do make a change to the data card of the XML file, it updates in the preview window immediately, which is a great benefit over these other file types. And the other nice thing about it is it opens in your regular browser. So if you're using Internet Explorer and you double click on the XML file, it will just open up in Internet Explorer. The process that I've created in my vault is what I believe is a real simple process. It only takes four steps to generate the ECN document, attach all your CAD files and, uh, and check everything back into the vault so that they will move through the approval process together. So step one is basically to take your, your files that need the engineering change and move them into a, a state called WIP, which is basically an editing state. The next step is to create your ECN document using the right mouse menu. And this is actually using a template that's built into my PDM vault. Next thing that I do is I simply copy the files that I've moved to the WIP stage and paste them as a reference on top of the ECN document. Finally, I check the ECN document into the vault, and this creates a link between all the relevant files that are going to go through the ECN approval process. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what I have in my vault here is just a very basic, simple vault. I've stripped out a lot of the documentation and folders just so we can see what's going on. Now, generally speaking, in a production environment, you're going to have a lot more information in your vault than what we see right here. But for ease of use, and so we can see how things work, I've stripped all of that information out, and I've just used a very, very simple vault. So the first step in my process was basically to go to the documents that need the engineering change. So here I'm going to go to my Gearbox assembly folder, and as you can see, I have one assembly in here and a number of part files that are all in the released state. So in theory, these are released to manufacturing, and these are currently being produced. I want to make an engineering change to the gearbox assembly and some of the pieces inside of this assembly. So the first step is to move this file into a state where we can actually do some editing on the file. The way my vault is configured, the files go from release state through a transition called ECN. Okay, we'll add a comment to that. And as you can see, the files go to now, now to a state called work in progress. So now they're at a state where we can make some edits. The next step in the process is to generate the ECN form itself and add the relevant information for the engineering change. So to do this, I'm using a template. My template is accessed through the right mouse menu. And I simply click on the, the option to create a new ECN. This brings a data input card in. And in here, I can add the description, the reason, and the disposition. This card could be configured to your needs, so more information could be added to here, and the layout of the card could be changed just to suit your needs. Now, for now, I'm going to leave these blank, and I'm just going to say OK. It'll open up the, uh, the ECN data card, and any information that I did add in the previous card would go into these boxes. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and create this. OK, the next step is to paste the assembly as a reference on top of the ECN. So I'm going to copy the assembly. 
The ECN in this vault is configured to drop in this location right here. And this is something else you can change in your vault if you wish. So here's the ECN that it created. It automatically pulled the serial number. Okay. And what we need to do is just right click and paste as reference that assembly that we just copied. And we're going to make that a reference to this ECN document. All right, my next step is to check that document into the vault. But prior to doing that, I just want to cover the reasons why I like the XML format. Now, one of them that I mentioned was that the preview window would update uh, immediately if you made any changes to this. So here, if I add a description, and then I simply save this, go to the preview window, you can see that information is automatically updated. Come back, and I'll change the description. Again, we'll hit save. And you can see the preview window is updated. So that's one of the nice things about this, is it automatically updates if you're using the XML, the XML form. The other nice thing is it's a very small file size. And you can see that by just looking at the size column here. And then finally, the last thing that I mentioned was that this file would open in your, uh, your internet browser. So if you double click on this and simply uh, open it up, it will open up in Internet Explorer. And the format is configured to, uh, to look the same as the preview window, as well as the data card. So I've kept these, I basically kept these the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this guy in. Okay. We'll add a description for the reason why we've created this. And we'll simply check that ECN document into the vault. You will see that the ECN goes into a state called work in progress. We added the CAD file assembly as a reference to the ECN. So now when you select the ECN and the contains tab, you can see it shows you a reference to the files that are contained within the ECN. Likewise, if we browse to the assembly itself that is under the ECN and we look at the where used, you can see it has a link now to the ECN document itself. And this goes for any of the, um, the lower range uh, files as well. So if we show all levels, you can see that now it's showing the level to the ECN XML document via the assembly reference. Okay, so the idea would be that now all of the files are in the work in progress stage. So we may make changes to the ECN document, we may make changes to the CAD files, and would basically do whatever work is, is basically uh, pointed out in the ECN uh, change notice itself. Once that work is completed, the next step would be to take this ECN document and push it through the approval process. So we'd simply go to modify, change state, and we'd send to engineering for their approval. All right, we'll add another comment and then we'll say OK. You'll notice the XML document has gone to the next state, which is engineering review. And uh, if we flick over to the contents tab, you'll notice that all the CAD files have gone with this document. Now, I would like to point out here, I am logged in as the administrator. So in theory, other people would be doing this approval process. But just so you can see how this is working, I'm going to use the same account. So next, we'll send for manufacturing. And we'll add another comment to that. And again, you'll see the XML file go to the state called manufacturing review as well as its reference files. Let's push it the rest of the way through so we'll send it to quality and then finally after quality has reviewed the file they can release it to manufacturing. Okay so now all files go to the release state. So now they're back at the release date. If we take a look at the data card or the engineering change, you can see it picked up all of our signatures as well as the approval dates. The same can be said if we go back to the assembly. And again, that's just basically the configuration of the workflow to grab those signatures and the dates. But what's nice about this 
is if we take a look at the ECN XML, we can see through the history dialog who made the changes to the file and when those changes were made. So every time the file was either changed and a new version was created, or it was transitioned through the workflow and it gathered signatures, um, we can see that information here in the history dialog. Okay, so the benefits of this is it's a very, very simple process. We've only used four steps. We also have traceability and accountability now with our ECN process by looking at the history dialog for the ECN file itself or for any files that are attached to the ECN. Thank you for your time. I hope this video proves useful to you. If you have any further questions, you may contact our support group by emailing SolidWorks support at mlc-cad.com. Again, I'm Chris Souter, and thank you very much for your time.